What is up, my sweet sugar bushes? So I recently got my tax return, and like any responsible 20, mid-20, late 20-something-year-old, late uh, spent it on things that probably weren't important or priority, but nonetheless, we got a new camera. So it's going to take me a minute to figure out the angles and how the lighting works with this new camera. camera. It's the Sony ZV-1. But it allows me to shoot in 4K. It's much better quality than the last camera I had that wasn't bad. But this one is top of the line right now, especially for what we do here. Um, and I think it's going to look great with our makeup looks. It'll be You'll be able to see it a lot more. Uh, and I planned on doing a crime and cosmetics today. But the person who note preps for me told me I needed to do a mukbang and murder. And needed to eat ribs, essentially. And I was like baby back ribs and she was like yes and I was like okay I don't know why but I'll do it because you asked me to and then I got the notes for the case and I'm like oh okay that's why now I understand which you will also understand too um, I know I said we keep it local but I was really craving some rolls from Texas Roadhouse so I put in an order went there got my order came home and they did not give me any rolls so I'm about to go after I'm done filming, I'm going to go back to Texas Roadhouse and I'm going to citizens arrest everyone in that restaurant. Keep an eye on the news because I may be there. But today we are talking about Peter Nears. So if you don't know who Peter Nears is, he is a serial killer. Essentially, you know, he was really just a fucking criminal, honestly, from the 1500s. So he was born in the 1540s and this was around the end of the peasant revolt, revolt in uh, that happened in Central Europe. Uh, essentially... Uh, individuals who were considered lower class were tired of getting the shit kicked out of them and being mistreated while the upper class, higher class, uh, hoarded wealth, things of that nature. And there was a giant revolt that was essentially lower class people against higher class people, uh, lower class people sieging castles, stealing what they can, stuff like that. Um, they were just sick and tired of being treated like they were nothing, um, so they showed the upper class what they were capable of. It happened to be the largest uprising until the French Revolution. And it's often stated that the mistreatment of the lower class at the time is ultimately what led to Peter's sociopathy. I think, is that, is that how you say it? Or is it, I don't know. But it led to basically him being a sociopath. And as Peter became a young adult, the, the crime rate in Germany was ridiculous. From 11% to 15% of that crime being murder between 1570 and 1590. Uh, and they were there was just an abundance of highwaymen. There were, there were, they were no short supply of them. And our boy Peter started one of these gangs in Alsace. I think that's how you say it, France. Excuse me if my pronunciation is off. Um, I'm just a dude stuck in a landlocked state and running on central corn time. And one of the reasons he started one of these games is because he was inspired to by his mentor, Martin Steer, who was a shepherd that got together 48 other shepherds. And over a 22-year spree, they traveled all the way to the Netherlands, just basically committing atrocities. Can you imagine your horse and buggy and along down the road? And there's a bunch of sheep in the road, and you're like, what the hell is going on? Uh, and this dude comes out of nowhere and just whacks you with a cane, and then his sheep eat your body? I could never. But, unfortunately, Peter's mentor was executed in 1572. So Nears had a, had a rotating, essentially a rotating workforce. Um, he had about 24 bandits that all traveled together. And they would just go from town to town, looting, murdering, raping, doing whatever they could for money, and just to make everyone else's lives a living hell. Mm. And they became, uh, a, in a sense, a bit of a local legend. You know, people had heard about them, um, but at the time, that's what it was. It was like word of mouth, you know. Uh, the people who ran into them usually didn't survive the ordeal to be able to tell more. So it was kind of like a folklore since um, people have heard about this roving band of bandits, uh, but no one has ever, you know, survived to tell the tale of them. And essentially, this gang was so organized when they had multiple, you know, they had multiple houses they wanted to rob or, or you know, people they wanted to kidnap, torture, and kill. They were able to split up into smaller groups and like one kill team would go do this you know another team would go rob uh they would all regroup you know put their earnings in and split it amongst each other and then when they needed to you know siege like a fucking i don't know big house or something something that required let's say take out a village that required all of them 
they would all band back together and then they would all attack as a unit. And, you know, at first it was just like small villages, you know, knocking over houses, stuff like that. But eventually, you know, they felt untouchable. They were this, you know, they were like these living legends, essentially. And they felt like the bash motherfuckers around because it kind of were. Um, they eventually get brave enough to where they band together and they start assaulting entire towns. And they, like I said, you know, they traveled hundreds of miles over Europe and lore about them still does exist. Uh, but they would assault these entire towns. It would burn the town to the ground. They would rape, pillage, and murder and do whatever they could uh, to create all kinds of mayhem and then just leave it in ruins. So essentially, they were playing hee-haw with the fuck around gang in the truest sense of the words. So they successfully do this for about 11 years. Now remember, 1500s, which I always thought about, like, you know how easy it would be to just murder people back then? Like, there's no DNA forensics. There's no, you know, telephones, no nothing. You can, you can literally murder somebody and just, like, walk around with their body, like, holding it up. And someone would be like, oh, what's this? You'd be like, oh, I drank too much ale or whatever, the potato juice. I don't know, whatever the hell they drank back then. And someone would be like, that oh, sounds about right. Um, and then they would just go on. Or if someone showed up dead and they were like, oh, what happened to him? You could be like, I saw a witch come through here earlier. And they would be like, oh, must have been those pesky witches. So like I said, they, they continued this for about 11 years until they were finally caught. Because one of their accomplishments, accomplice, um, oh my god, one of their accomplices turned them in. So I guess there really is no such thing as honor among thieves. And Nears was tortured until he confessed to around 75 murders. And some of the murders he did confess to corroborated with local missing women. Um, so they knew he was telling the truth. But our boy Nier somehow manages to escape from prison uh, and is not executed for these murders. So now, he, since he was captured, he confessed and he escaped. These folklore um, tales that people were telling about him and his you know, group of bandits... They become very real to people. Because at first it was just like, oh, did you hear about this happen? Oh, well, you know, this could just be hearsay. But now that he was actually caught and confessed, um, people's, <clears throat> people's fear was at an all-time high. And with that fear comes to publicity, people started writing, like, I'm, like they started writing songs about him, pamphlets, um, stories, you name it. It was basically he had people making merch for him in a sense. So one of the things that came out about Nears is that he was essentially in cahoots with the devil. Now, a man by the name of Johann Wick started just churning out stories about Peter and he followed Peter very closely. Um, and he was one of the sources of these stories. So apparently Mr. Near, um, was real good friends with the devil. Uh, he was also an expert in black magic, and he could transform uh, into like a log or a stone. He could also go, turn invisible, and that's how he got away from a lot of these crimes, as well as escaping prison. But essentially, the story goes is that Peter met with the devil, and the devil was like, listen, man, I really like what you're doing up here. I'm a big fan of your work. Um... I got more souls than I know what to do with them now. I'm, I just, I would like your autograph, but I feel like that's a little out of place when I'm off for your proposition. As long as you keep sending me souls, I will aid you and abet you in what you're doing. I will protect you. I will, apparently, also, one of the things is, I will give you a monthly allowance. Uh, apparently, the devil um, has a very specific chore wheel if you want to get in a monthly a monthly allowance. And I wonder how that worked. Is like Peter... Did Peter like go to the same spot every time he needed a monthly allowance? Did the devil just show up? Did he have a magic coin purse that a couple shillings just appeared in? I don't know. Now, <clears throat> when it came to black magic, in the area the lore was, how they were so successful robbing houses, how Peter was successful with robbing people, is candles made from the skin and the fat of fetuses rendered someone able to, if they lit the candle, this person can then go into whatever house they wanted. The occupants of the house would not wake up and they could steal as they please and leave. Um, it was also believed that eating um, 
the dried heart of infants or, or fetuses granted you in you could shape shifting abilities essentially. And that, with him being in bed with the devil, made him one of the most feared people in the area. Essentially, Peter was big time Rush, and the devil was his tour manager. So these um, these these stories made people fear him even more because you know this man would be essentially what he's doing is he's murdering pregnant women, cutting out their fetus, and then eating, drying the hearts and eating them, uh, so he can turn into a log or a rock or whatever shape shifting ability. Uh, as well as turning their fat and their skin into candles. So now people, everybody is on edge because there's this man going around, breaking into houses, murdering infants and cutting off their hands and feet and keeping them. Uh, he's been said to cut off women's breasts as well. And he's also, you know, cutting out the hearts of infants and it's, it's, it's fucking pandemonium, essentially. Peter was so successful with this too because not only was he a master of the black arts, he was a master of disguise. He was able to run and change his appearance in plain sight. Allegedly, he would turn into a goat every now and then. Pretty on brand. Uh, his th like it, well, And his other two favorites were turning into a soldier as well as a leper. Um, someone with leprosy. Um, I wonder... <laughs> it just baffles me that this man was able to escape prison after um, confessing to 70-something murders. Um... I wonder if, I don't know, maybe there was like a law back then if you could kiss the guard on the lips before he handcuffed you, you were free to go. I don't know, but he got out nonetheless. So our boy changed his appearance a lot, but no matter what he changed his appearance to, he always kept a handful of items on him. He always carried money, two loaded pistols, because you know he always kept that thing on him, a freaking broadsword, and allegedly, a small leather pouch that held the feet and hands and dried hearts of the infants he would murder. <clears throat> kind of like a phone wallet keys situation here. And then, so, you know, there's been, they're making arrest warrants for this guy. Fucking sketches are coming out. Um, the top, the this camera's temperature was getting very high, so I had to, I switched it out of 4K because I don't want to burn it up. Um, but I guess we got more room in the shot now, huh? Still learning things, so bear with me. So the the towns have their best artists on these sketches of Peter. The arrest warrants are being put out. He was described as an older man uh, with crooked fingers and a, chin, a scar on his chin, essentially. Um, this was back in medieval, medieval times, so that could literally be any older person. So in 1581, our boy Peter reaches the end of the line. He goes to a local inn called The Bells in Neumarkt, Germany. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but we're just gonna wing it. And while he's there, he would like to go to a bathhouse. So, for some reason, he asked the innkeeper, hey, will you hold my magical leather pouch that has all his um, baby hands, feet, and fetus in and dried up hearts in, so he can go to this bathhouse, have a bath, you know, pay a nickel to have a lady of the evening come wash him up so he can be smelling fresh and clean for his next murder. Old Spice could never. Now, while he's at this bathhouse, people in the area kind of get an idea of who he is, and they start to bully this innkeeper into, you know, the innkeeper was kind of like, not my pig, not my farm, man, you know, if he wants to murder a bunch of people, whatever, it's not, I'm not going to test him because he'll probably murder me. But local uh, townsfolk bully this innkeeper to opening up this magical leather pouch where they find the extremities and dried up hearts of infants. So uh, he is picked up at this bathhouse, doesn't get a refund, and arrested. He's not able to evade authorities because he doesn't have his magical pouch. He can't harness his invisibility because he does not have the pouch on his person. So he didn't expect to get arrested at a bathhouse. But you know, sometimes that's how it goes. So while he's rub-a-dub-dubbing in the bath, loving life, Love him where he's at, proud of his accomplishments, he gets arrested. So, once he's arrested, he is tortured and confesses to 544 murders, which included 24 pregnant women. So after he confesses, he's sentenced to be executed, obviously. But, you know, being hung or being beheaded was not in the cards for Peter. Uh, because our ex the executioner that was assigned to execute Mr. Nears uh, had a bit of a sense of humor. So, the executioner ended up torturing him for three days straight. 
Some of these fun-filled activities Peter endured while uh, at his execution seminar was being skinned in various places on his body and the executioner, after flaying him, uh, poured hot oil on the wounds. They greased up his feet and then held him over hot coals to try to roast his body. But Peter was still hanging on, still clutching to life. So on the third day, they finally strap him to the breaking wheel. Do you know what the breaking wheel is? I advise you to Google it. It's a medieval torture device. It essentially breaks your body. So they strap him to this breaking wheel. Um, and after the executioner quite literally crushes Nier's entire body, he was still alive. I don't know. Maybe he just had a strong will to live. Maybe it was his deal with the devil. Who knows? But, finally, after the executioner pulled out his mathematician skills and fractioned Peter, basically cutting him into pieces, he finally succumbed to his injuries and died. And finally, the medieval boogeyman's reign had ended. Now, this was so long ago, a lot of this is considered folklore, but... Uh, historians have found evidence that corroborated with a lot of Peter's story, essentially, and also stated that it is possible his, de his, his death count was much higher. But take it, with, take it with a grain of salt, take it for what you will, but that is the story of the medieval boogeyman Peter Nears, who kept infant extremities and dried up feed his heart inside a leather pouch that apparently turned him invisible. So we are going to choose our murder for next week. So give me a second. All right, who are we going to be covering next week? Weekend. The Port Arthur Massacre is what we are going to be covering next weekend. We're going to be doing a crime and cosmetics so we can see how good the looks show up on this camera. I think I may just make a random making video just to test it and post it. I don't know, maybe we'll talk about some some wild stories of my uh, youth. I don't know. Uh, be on the lookout. I am hammering out the details of a giveaway soon. Should be uh, going on within this week or next week. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you have any cases you want covered, leave them in the comments below and I will put them in the murder pot here uh, and we will get to it eventually. We're going to go through everybody in this pot. Hopefully it never runs out so been a lot of murders and crime in the world so i think we're good in that department check out our podcast snacks back it's not a true crime podcast though i'm thinking about starting a true crime podcast i just haven't decided if that's something i want to do yet uh but we're starting a new season thursday uh call it basically a decade in review join the coven it's our discord server we get together we play among us and roblox and stuff like that together i also stream on twitch i'll leave the uh, all the links to my other social medias in the description of this video thanks for stopping by let me know what you thought of the medieval boogeyman and like i said if you have a case you want covered leave it in the comments below i'm starting also doing a kind of like a true crime segment on tiktok as well but i love you guys i hope you have the best day ever and i hope all the good things happen to you be safe be kind to others most of all be kind to yourself and i will see you next week Bye bye